Okay, so this is an introduction to the Model Builder 1.0 uh, module in the D3 Mesh application. Uh, for more information and details, you can go to d3tool.com and uh, <clears throat> check out everything there. Also, join the D3 Tool uh, Facebook group uh, for more information as well. Okay, so um, this is how the Model Builder uh works and how it should be used let's check it out here i'll do a couple examples you can see i have uh several that i've tried um let's just start with um look at that poor scan, scan quality okay let's do that try that one out so if i click on model builder um the first thing that you see here is it says uh, uh this changes the model builder and the text says, please, uh, or sorry, press go once model is loaded. Um, so model is loaded. I can press go now. Um, auto align. What that does is uh, essentially if, the, if this model is just way out here somewhere, which sometimes it can happen in Mesh Mixer, um, or if it's tilted or, or in some weird kind of awkward orientation that's not somewhere near this area, um, you can just check that box and hit go, and it'll bring it back to where it should be. Um, but we're pretty close, so I'm gonna go ahead and say go. Uh, first step, occlusal. Rotate model to align with the mesh mixer grid uh, with teeth facing down, uh, then press next. So let's see. Just kinda get it aligned with the grid here. This is probably the least important part. But uh, it is it is important to have the, the at very least the teeth pointing down um, this direction and also the occlusal surface looking up towards you. So next, um, we get a side view. Next, anterior view. I don't know if that helped at all. I'm gonna hit next. Okay, um, so this is the first step where this can really actually uh, make a big difference on the uh, the rest of the outcome of this model building procedure. Um, so it says click on terminal tooth and draw occlusal outline, then press next. That's only somewhat true. Um, at first, uh, I had this uh, selection, this uh, sphere disc brush. I had it a lot bigger, and I would just say, just kind of just go all the way around the arch and uh, just kind of do it real quickly. Um, but what I found is if I shrink it down just slightly and do the same thing, so essentially the first part's true. You do draw an occlusal outline starting on the terminal too. Uh, but once you do that, then you kind of come in. And just get the sides here as well. Uh, because if it was the, the bigger brush, it would actually spill off into this unnecessary stuff. And um, I feel like this is just a bit more, more detailed. And I'm just kind of selecting what I want, the good, uh, any of the information that I'd like in the model. And uh, I'll get a little bit more. Okay, so uh, essentially the teeth are roughly selected. That's all we're really looking for. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. So uh, doing a few things here, but uh, the first thing it did was uh, just quickly selected uh, the inverse and deleted it. Uh, so you're left with pretty much what you need. Uh, it does some other things, and I'll go into detail um, on exactly what it does, uh, possibly in a different video. But uh, for now, uh, essentially, it's just that we have the teeth that we need, and the next step says to trim away any uh, other obvious remaining outer defects. So any holes or anything like that, 
uh, on the occlusal surface or anything like that, no big deal, not a problem. Um, what we're really concerned about are, are kind of the wings and things that flap out like that. If you accidentally selected a, a little bit uh, too much of that. Um, but where we're at, uh, where the selection tool is at now is it's at a unwrap brush zero uh, size radius, and it's meant for kind of doing this uh, box select. Um, if you see something that looks a little suspicious here on the border, you just want to keep on left clicking around it uh, until you uh, go back to the origin and you can kind of see it's selected there. Instead of uh, hitting delete within Mesh Mixer, uh, this delete function works a little bit better for our purposes. I'm going to hit delete. Kind of check uh, all the other borders out too, just to make sure uh, everything on this outside boundary just looks relatively flush, okay, no, uh, no overlapping triangles, no big holes, um, or small holes right next to the border, um, or the boundary, I should say. Uh, but things look good. I mean, everything looks pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and back that up a little bit. And we have trimmed all the other defects, so I'm going to hit Next. And this part here is uh, it's just doing some background work. It's really just um, kind of preparing the outside border uh, to extrude out and kind of getting the best quality mesh and, uh, and also trying to achieve the most robust set of triangles on the outside edge. So no matter how, so almost no matter what, when you extrude, it will always, it will always succeed. Um, that's the that was a huge aim for this particular module here, because uh, Mesh Mixer can be very very finicky about you know what it lets you extrude and not and and then down the line if you if you plain cut uh, or plain cut you can uh, end up with a uh, an open boundary again so so the whole deal here is to try to prevent all that from happening before it starts and, and the key to that is to get this outside border. Uh, as perfect as possible, and there's a, a lot of steps that go into that, but um, uh, where we're at now, it says uh, improved triangle quality at boundary, press next to extrude boundary. Um, the reason I have it stop here is uh, so you can just kind of zoom in and check and see and go, okay, yeah, the outside border is selected. It's not a maroon selection. It's not an invalid selection. It's uh, not something kind of funky going on here. I can see that there's a, a nice orange selection all the way around the outside edge. I can hit W, kind of see what that looks like. Um, but that doesn't really matter. Um, right now, I just know that that looks good. Everything looks selected properly. I'm going to hit Next. So the first sign is good. Um, it did extrude properly. Um, no errors there. And after it extrudes, it does a couple other things, and uh, then we'll kind of seal off the bottom of the model. So we should have uh, almost a solid model, uh, but just with these little defects left in the uh, occlusal surface, or anything left in the remaining uh, area that we didn't touch yet. And that's kind of the a big point of this as well is. You know, we're not trying to affect any of the actual scan data that's uh, important for uh, a clinical uh, information. We only really want to modify and uh, and and tweak um, the triangles and and areas of the mesh that really have no clinical impact. Um, so I I tried as hard as I could to make sure that we don't touch any uh, triangles that we don't need to. And basically, just do kind of like you do conservative dentistry. This is conservative mesh. Um, so that's what we have here so far. Um, we extrude the boundary, close the bottom, um, press next to fill holes. Uses the inspector. It does a, a smooth fill, not a flat fill, uh, which I personally think gives you a better uh, <clears throat> fill for those holes um, that existed there. And so, basi so basically now we have uh, the entire closed mesh 
everything's good, uh, should be solid, um, but it's, and I guess you could technically 3D print this, um, but uh, what we all know is you want to save some of that valuable resin, um, so it says filled remaining holes, press next uh, to hollow the model, next. And there will be options to, uh, to pick exactly what distance you'd like uh, for your hollow here, but uh, just for now, I have it built into uh, about, or I think exactly three millimeters, um, just to make sure we don't have any broken models or anything like that. Um, okay, so hollowed model, uh, press next to plain cut the base. Uh, and this is also very important to note. Um, at the very end, at the very, very end, when you plain cut uh, the base, at least in this application, it will always plain cut exactly at the level uh at the at the home origin zero plane uh, zero you know uh y uh distance uh on the uh on the mesh mixer uh, uh gui here so wherever this grid is that's where the final cut's going to be so if your model is sitting up like this and you attempted to press next, it wouldn't do anything, or it might give you some error or something like that. Um, but uh, all, all you need to do to fix that is just, uh, before you get started doing all this uh, model work, you just make sure that um, your occlusal surface is approximately how far you'd like it um, from where this grid is, and that will give you uh, how tall your model uh, is, the base is. So that final cut is right at that surface, and I'm going to just hit cancel. Um, and it should be programmed all uh, in there to, to just do this automatically and take care of it. Even if you're just within this ballpark, um, it should be okay. Uh, but still, if you're getting any troubles or errors, check that first, and, and that would probably be a good thing to look at. Um, hold model, press next to plain cut, next. Uh, plain cut, and... All right, it worked. Um, no uh, open boundaries. It's a closed mesh. Um, everything looks good and ready to print. Uh, hollow model cut, model built. Pre uh, please export for printing. Um, so now we are able to do that. Uh, and let's just double check to make sure. I mean, inspector. And yeah, looks good. And that is basically it. it's ready to print. And uh, at the at the current time uh, of this recording, we're, we're only able to do uh, single models at a time or single arches at a time. Uh, but truly, uh, it's very trivial to get in there and make a couple changes to where we can get this um, doing both the upper and lower uh, at the either. Probably not at the same time, but in a, in a way to where you can keep them aligned and in the in the same orientation, but give them both bases as well. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. That's how this one works here, and I will do a couple other videos on uh, on some more models, some some more challenging models, and uh, just some more repetitions on how this works and and how to use it, uh, so you can kind of get familiar with it. All right. Thanks again so much. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Take care and happy modeling.